Well, it's finally the day. The Flames and Oilers finally get to play each other this season, and for the first time in the regular season, right after Christmas here, it seems a little late than usual here, considering we play each other a lot in the preseason here in the heated rival of the Battle of Alberta. You would think we would have played the Oilers in the regular season at least once by now, but uh, this year, I think the schedule maker must have known all the movement that was going to happen between the two franchises in the offseason here. And I actually did contemplate going to this game, but I felt it would have been, it would have wanted to be a too expensive trip to do for uh, just to stay overnight and hope to get back in time for the Roughnecks game back here the next day here. But yeah, this is definitely a more anticipated Calgary Edmonton game that we've had in a long, long time here. As, you know, there's definitely some former Weathers now facing the Flames and some flamier, former Flames facing the Oilers for the first time against each other in the regular season here. As, as you recall here, it started at free agency where anticipation started heating up a little that the Calgary Flames decided to move on from Mike Smith and Edmonton was looking for a veteran goalie to compliment Miko Koskinen and Mike Smith happened to sign with the Edmonton Oilers there. A lot of the Calgary Flames, we were looking for a veteran goalie who would compliment David Riddick as uh, we weren't sure. And so far at this point, David Riddick has stepped up to show he's ready to be a number one goalie, but it doesn't hurt to have a you know capable backup to count on. We happened to do sign long-time Oiler well, most recently with the Oilers, but he got traded to the uh, Philadelphia Flyers at the deadline. Cam Talbot here. So in a way, we have each other's goalies here. And then, things got ramped up even more, as I definitely made my video and this reaction, and I was stunned that it actually happened. I, When I said it actually happened, because there was rumors that Calvary was not happy with uh, how things went with James Neal and how much he signed him for and how long we signed him for all up the road. Edmonton also had a player that they were also weren't happy with how much they signed for and how long they signed for and Milan Lucic and they also had a change in uh, you know management there up in Edmonton and the Oilers were looking for a scoring winger and looking to maybe dump his contract and from a hockey and cap point of view Theoretically, it makes sense because they wanted a scoring winger and the Flames wanted some uh, grit and maybe some leadership and presence in the locker room and on the ice. And the Flames were stuck paying over five and a half million dollars for former years for one player, and the Oilers were stuck paying six million for a player for former years. And I mean, I would have thought there would have been more validity in the rumors if it wasn't the Flames and Oilers, but they actually made that trade, and it actually happened, and now we have Milan Lucic, and they have James Neal, and uh, you can debate who won that trade, especially up to this point, considering what each team was looking for. It's like, uh, you know, a football team wanting a, a returner, and, and another team wanted an offensive lineman, and, you know, Maybe the offensive lineman, you know, is just there to provide more stability on the team. Because I'm thinking back to when the Calgary Stampeders, we traded uh, Wes Cates. He actually started his career at the Calgary Stampeders. He looked great on returns, and he was a great backup running back. And the, uh, at the time, he wasn't going to supplant Joffrey Reynolds. And Calgary had some issues on the offensive line there. And we made a trade with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders because they wanted a running back, and Calgary wanted a you know, steady offensive lineman and Rob Blasio, so we swung that deal and, you know, from the outside it looks like, well, Saskatchewan ran away with it, but then Calgary wanted, you know, strength in another position here, and yeah, James Neal, he definitely, uh, up to this recording, has 16 goals, and Milan Lucic only has three, and part of the condition of that trade was, uh, if James Neal scores at least 21 goals, and Milan Lucic is 10 or more away 
we'll get a third round pick in 2020 because part of the contract too was Edmonton was eating 12.5 percent of it so they're basically paying you know over at basically almost the same price as they had for Milan Lucci for James Neal there however I want to mention that I think James Neal had 11 or 12 of those goals in October where it helps say you have like six goals in like two games there he had a four goal game there and Milan Lucic, I mean, he definitely, you know, has provided that presence. I mean, he's an expensive police officer, and he's been great in the room. He's definitely great in the media because uh, the, he's, I've heard more sound bites from Milan Lucic than I did with James Neal, and Milan Lucic looks more enthusiastic. And I actually see a lot more Flames fans sharing pictures. Hey, I met Milan Lucic and had a picture of them, and. He's been great, great in the community. You saw more out of him than they did with James Neal. And, you know, one of the factors say that James Neal wouldn't play well enough to get ice time and didn't get along with the coach. And now we have to follow that. And that's one of those what ifs of, you know, if we didn't swing that deal. So you can debate who won the trade. But uh, let's just say less people have been picking on, less players have been picking on uh, Johnny Goodrow and Sean Monahan on the ice there because we have Lou Cheech. And then. We also signed Tobias Reeder, who was a uh, order last year. And Tobias Reeder was a, you know, just a bottom six or even a fourth line four, forward. That, you know, he had ten goals, thirty points there, and then he seemed to lost his touch, and uh, he didn't score any goals with the uh, Edmonton Oilers last year. And people seem to blame him that, oh, he missed the playoffs because he didn't score ten goals. But I think it goes more deeper than that, and then. Actually, Tobias Reeder has a discord, and he actually also has three goals for the Flames there, but he's just a, a fourth liner. He was here on a professional tryout, and, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, actually was put on waivers and briefly was sent down to Stockton, but he's gotten more ice time on the fourth line due to injuries. But uh, you could debate who had the better deal there. I mean, Mike Smith, at the start of the year, he definitely looked great in that with Miko Koskinen, but. You could say the Oilers are showing some cracks in their armor because uh, Edmonton, uh, yes, they got two generational talented guys in Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, and it's exciting and how great they are for Pulleys and how great they are for the game there. They were scoring on a historic blistering pace there that eventually teams were going to start figuring out that they can contain them. Not necessarily stop them because they're difficult players to stop there that you could beat the Edmonton Oilers there because they haven't been getting their uh, depth scoring lately, and that's why they've been slipping down. But it's a wide, still a wide open Pacific Division here, and Edmonton seems to have been trending down here. Well, Calgary actually slowly has been trending up here. I mean, we definitely didn't have as good of a start, and not at that same pace as we were last year. And then we had the couldn't score a goal there, and then the fall of Bill Peters there, and. Right now, I mean, we're still looking better with uh, Jeff Ward, and now he puts lines in the blender right there, but we still need to work on a lot more shots and working on not as many shots here. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely a very anticipated game here, and actually looking at, you know, Golte on our side here, Cam Talbot, you know, his numbers are under 500. There was a few games that Cam Talbot's played that he had a great game, but he didn't have any, you know, run support or scoring support there. Well, the Oilers, I mean, it seems like if they shut down, uh, you know, McDavid and Drysaddle there, they uh, definitely can be stopped, and there hasn't been any much secondary scoring, and wasn't James Neal supposed to provide that steadily throughout the year? Because James Neal is slowly looking like the James Neal that we had to put up with, as in uh, if he's not scoring, he's not as useful as a player. Well, Lucic, I think he has... Actually, he's been hard done by before he finally got that first goal, and he's a very streaky player. And one of the reasons he also picked to come here to Calgary is he actually he had a rapport with Jeff Ward, who's now the interim head coach of the Calgary Flames, but he knew him from his Boston days and had success, obviously, uh, you know, part of the team when they won the Stanley Cup. But Milan Lucic at that time, I mean, now he's just a shell of his former self, you know, where he used to be one of the top tie five power forwards in the league where he was a 30 goal scorer but now I mean he's an expensive police officer and he's still 
Still got to wonder why sometimes he's used on the power play there, but he the effort is there still. And sometimes there's a few times that he thought he'd get a few more goals here, but I mean, I still think for what Calgary was seeking, contract aside, it sucks, it's expensive, and well, we knew that when we made the trade here, and we're probably likely uh, still going to have him for a couple more years because no one else is going to want to touch the contract unless we sweeten the pot and give up a prospect or four, and I don't think we're going to do that. He's actually been providing a physical presence, and, uh, and the one knock, it'll be interesting to see how he's going to play for the first time against the Edmonton Oilers, as he spent three seasons with many of those guys, is the fact that uh, one knock that I had I work with an Oilers fan, and actually I've heard from many fans familiar with Milan Lucic, the one knock that they have on Lucic is the fact that uh, he tends to not be as tough on players on the ice that he's friends with. I mean, there's that old saying that, yeah, you're friends with off the ice, but on the ice it's bang, bang, bang. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how, uh, you know, Milena Lucic is going to play against the Edmonton Oilers with these guys. And obviously, vice versa, how James Neal is going to play as an Oiler against the Flames. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see what kind of reception he's going to get in Edmonton. I mean, I mean, he didn't. I mean, he was just, he signed that big contract and he had that first, you know, season exactly what they wanted out of him. And they got into the playoffs in the second round there. And actually, no, that was the, actually, he did not go in the playoffs with the, with them. Uh, I believe it was, uh, yeah, 2017, actually. Yeah, that's where I was thinking he did get into the playoffs with them and went to the second round there. But uh, after he signed that ridiculous contract, which, it was a bad contract, I thought, at the time they saw him. And that guy was saying, uh, you signed up to that big deal, and now it's kind of backfired that we're taking it on. But, you know, James Neal, I mean, it wasn't a good contract after all. But given the market, he would have signed for that much for that long if he wasn't here, and who knows. But uh, it's uh, definitely going to be interesting to see. And, I mean, it's a bad contract, but I think, I mean, he'll probably get booed just because now he's with the Flames, but, uh, and they got Neil out of it, but he didn't, I don't think he did anything bad or said anything bad. I mean, everyone says the right things when you get traded, and, you know, Neil on Lucic is always a stand-up, you know, guy, and always thanks the organization, and I know he, he was thankful to the Bruins when he went back to Boston when he played for the Kings, but uh, it's just the Belle Valpera thing. I think James Neal... We'll probably get a more cooler reception as in booing when he comes back to Calgary. Then New York Lucic will get up in Edmonton just because of uh, how things were, were like with James Neal. And, uh, you know, at the time he definitely didn't work with Bill Peters. And who knows what the what if now that Bill Peters is out of the picture and Jeff Ward and he's willing to mix up the lineups here. But, you know, the other players you can add to this equation with the Battle of Alberta as well. Evans and I actually signed Anthony Peluso who's with the Flames, but all he is is just a tough guy on the fourth line who spends time in the minors, so he's not as big of a factor. And then, I mean, there's Alex Chase on. He used to be a Flame for one year. Is now at the or found a new home with the Oilers after he was on the Capitals after they won the Cup there. But it's just players who were Oilers last year that are Flames this year, and then we have a few Flames who are now Oilers this year that were Flames last year that. Played somewhat of a prominent role, and then you can add to the equation that uh, Glenn Goldson, who was on the assistant coaching staff, is now an order. He actually was the head coach here for two years. I mean, Jeff Ward did spend some time in the Oilers organization in the old six season as I think one of the scouting team, but not as prominent role as the head coach here. But uh, I'm gonna say, yeah, it's finally time we uh, play these guys, and yeah, let's hope the hype lives up to the hype and. Uh, Hampton gets the first taste of it, and maybe I'll try to go to the game on January 11th, uh, first time that we get to see James Neal and Mike Smith with the bad guys here. And then we get to say, thankfully, we got Lou Cheats now and Reader and, I mean, and Talbot. I mean, who knows? Is Smith and Talbot going to face off against each other? Yeah, this is crazy. And just imagine if uh, we finally play the others in the playoffs. This will make things even even more interesting, but uh, there's still a lot more hockey to be played, and it's all about tonight here, and it's finally time we get to see former Oilers playing the Flames and Flamer Flames playing the Oilers. So uh, 
it's just weird how things played out here, but are you excited about this? And, you know, what do you think? Uh, I guess going to add it out there uh, who's got the better deal in the trade so far and then Neil and Lucic. And uh, am, I, am I not alone here that every time I look at Oilers games, I'm looking at, please, Neil, did you score? Did you score? I just want him to get that 21st goal. Hopefully not all five against us. But I'm just hoping Neil gets five more goals. I'm sure if he stays healthy, despite the pace he's on now, I'm sure he can muster five more goals between now and the end of the season because I don't think Lucic is going to even score 10 with Calgary given his role and where he's at now. So I'm not worried about uh, being less than 10 away. So thank you very much. We'll take that third round pick and, uh, you know, all things considered, I'm fairly happy with all the foreign runners that we have here. I mean, given the roles, and uh, they're not prominent roles, but it's just another wrinkle to add to the Battle of Alberta. To say, Edmonton's definitely counting more on our former Flames, and we are counting on their former Oilers. That's the other way I'm saying here, and you know, the media is probably happier that we have Luke Cheats because uh, he's an approachable guy and always gets gets sound bites and stories there. So anyway, if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along here, and mostly talk Calgary sports here, and, you know, I definitely have my big, big reflection on Happy Daryl Saturday, and, and this Battle of Alberta game, definitely some nice after uh, Christmas treats here, and, uh, you know, I've uploaded a little more during my winter break here, but just for another week here before I go back to my regular uploads with game recaps and just the odd video here and there, but, you know, that's why I've uploaded a few more videos recently, just because I'm off work and, uh, you know, enjoy some downtime in between here, and a lot of places still closed or have a skeleton crew, so I'm not as out running errands here, but, uh, you know, it's been fun to put out more videos and talk some sports, and like I said, the hockey guy and the entertainment guy kind of inspired me to uh, be more active on YouTube, because I enjoy watching his content, and Definitely recommend it if you already not subscribed where he talks hockey and kind of just does this, you know, hangout format here and still trying to grow myself. I'm not to his level there, but, uh, you know, this is a fun creative outlet here for me. So, uh, anyway, go Flames go and uh, thanks for Neil. Thanks for taking on Neil so we can have Lou Cheech and Cam Talbot and Device Reader. They've also looked all right in Flames colors there and, uh, you know, Let's hope we beat those Oilers, and, uh, you know, I'm always proud to cheer for Red and be Red, and either if it's on the ice or on the field there, or even with my college colors here, too. So, uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next video.